All right, so we are back. My voice still getting here, but I'm back in the, the studio only for one day because tomorrow I head to Nashville, Tennessee, back to my hometown where I'm going to rock up on Misfits number eight. And listen, I don't know what's going down with the entire card. All I know is I'm excited to be back home and I'm going to check out the fights, see what's going on with some other things down there as well. And let me check in with some of my old friends over on the Misfits and the Zone side. But for today, we're going to talk about Kingpin semifinals just a little bit, but more so the finals and especially on the men's side of the bracket because King Kenny and Anisan Gibb won their fights in the semifinals and they're headed to the finals to face each other. This is a story that has been building for the last, I guess, two years now with a faded call out from Kenny in his first boxing video with the beta squad give me gabe i can beat him leading up to a little bit of potential tension between the coaches of said as leon wills and daily Perales will go head to head they both actually train deji together but leon has said he looks forward to the chess match with daily and daily has proved he is one of the best chess players as a boxing coach in our scene and up and coming in the pro scene. And so there's a lot of gray area here. There's so many things, so many little nuances. It's not just as black and white as my background and my ghostly pale skin. So let's get into this first initial way too early breakdown of the King Pin Finals. Let's go. All right, so like I said, King Kenny and Gibb. I'm not gonna do full breakdowns on both these fights just because one is own. It's a little bit of a hassle to go through the footage and get it whitelisted, but you guys can check out the breakdown for that. Me and Sensei went over King Kenny Wenderson, and by the time this video goes out, we'll probably already have recorded Jarvis and Gibb, but, but like we all know now, Kenny and Wenderson Nunez, complete domination from Kenny, doing whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted to do it, from round one till the end of the fight. Uppercuts, frolicking like a gazelle in the forest it was like art when he was in there he was painting his own picture sending winderson to the canvas and then shaking his hips like van gogh when he knew he had that one painting that everybody was down with like i said it was domination start to finish kenny used his range well offensively he was as good as always inside he was better than i thought he would be and pretty much kept winderson in less than first gear like almost in reverse it was it was Winterson didn't get the car started. It was not good. On the other side, you saw Gibb and Jarvis. And it was, like I said, it was a Bob the Builder performance from Gibb. He continued to fix little holes he saw early. And at that point, looked at Jarvis and said, I'm the captain now. And steered his ship into deep water where Jarvis just didn't have anything left in those fourth and fifth rounds. I thought Gibb was a great combination puncher in the fight. I thought he had great high and low variability in his attacks. He worked the jab upstairs to go body work downstairs. His inside to outside game was where I thought the fight was one where he was attacking offensively inside and then just out of range, smart enough to not play the back and forth game with Jarvis, which we said would be a massive key there. But that's how we got to this point now. And as for what happens in the finals, let me just look at the coaches themselves and their early preview and then we'll get into my breakdown <laughs> so we got kenny gibb in the final like i said daily versus lee as well on the coaching side of things oh look at that <laughs> smile from leon as soon as he said daily versus lee by the way this is real and wills you guys know the boys over there the four horsemen my boy vidal Leon obviously fresh off the win. Look at his face though. When Vidal happens to mention that it'll be Daly versus Lee, obviously it's Kenny versus Gibb, but that coaching back and forth, we know Leon has said it to me, sitting right next to me, that he can't wait for that chess match. He obviously thinks he has Kenny's number. They think they have Gibb's number, but look at Lee when he says like that. Like I said, Daly versus Lee as well. On the yeah, that's one he wants. He's been asking for it since the tournament started. I predicted Gibb and Kenny in the final. So did he. Now we're here. And these men are normally in the same tee, repping the same guy. And now they're going to be on opposite sides of the table. How you, how you feel coaching against Daly? See, the game's the game. The game is the game. The game's the game at the end of the day. <laughs> I love Leon, man. He's the realest dude in the fucking world and he said it because he means it the game is the game there is not only this video but on twitter these two have gone back and forth leon and daily are already in war mode and him saying the game is the game means there are no more friends here granted there's no hate between the two of them but for this time until the end of the finals daily and leon are not on the same team they're not co-coaches of deji they are at war and so are their fighters and that war has started out with words as both guys have been on twitter today talking about what's going to happen in this final already the mind games have already started there was some discussion around this final being more than five rounds i think it was true jordy that potentially put it out there that said kenny versus gibb should be more than four or five rounds that should be six or eight now 
I don't know if it's necessarily should be eight rounds when these guys have never done more than five. I could see six. I could definitely see that because that usually is our standard main event number in the Misfits side and Logan and KSI did that. Six would be fine with me, but eight was the number I think thrown around a couple of times and Leon said we would love for the finals to be at eight rounds, but the Oju Dairy, Oju Dairy family aren't built like that. Oos. He puts the, again, this is war. He puts the two swords crossed and the shield. And come to find out, Daly's actual given name is actually Daly Ojadari. I didn't know that. But that's a direct shot across the bow already because this was apparently a, a rumored thing. I don't even know if this was official, but the Kenny's team had been asked or it had been rumored about the, the eight rounds thing that they turned it down. They said, no. We're not doing eight rounds. We're going to stick with the four or five that we've been doing for the tournament, which again, makes sense. But again, just a little shot across the bow there from Leon, which was responded to from Daly on his Instagram. He said, it's not the Daly and Leon show. Everyone's forgetting Leon is the SNC coach. So why is it Daly Leon? So again, if I'm reading that, that's a little shot to me. I get, I don't know. And again, I know they're trying to downplay this, but I know both men have an ego involved in this. And of course they should. This is a fight. This is the fight game. They absolutely should have ego involved. And it is going to be for bragging rights, whatever, for, you know, when they go back and coach Deji, oh, hey, remember this, this, it's obviously not like some bitter rivalry where it's like, ah, you know, life depends on this. But there is a little banner here and there is some shots. Again, Leon threw his. Here comes Daly with his saying, hey, that's just the SNC coach over there. That's not the boxing coach is why he says maybe it should have been Leon versus at Coach Calvin official because Calvin is Kenny's strength and conditioning coach. And he says, I'm not going to play along to people's games. I know people want me to have a slanging match with Leon online, but I'm not going to do it. He's part of my team with Deji. It would be fake if all of a sudden I start going back and forth with Leon. I'm not a kid. But then he says, the only thing I'll say, and I'm going to leave it at this, if Gibb is supposedly a knockout specialist and the stronger guy, then why would there be a need for eight rounds? Five rounds is plenty of time to knock someone out. Do you need eight rounds to stop Austin? I think not. Professional fighters do it in four rounds. See everyone in the final. There is no need to talk for this one with the blood emoji. I don't know if that's in reference to just the Blood Brothers or the fact that there's going to be blood on the night, but... Essentially saying, listen, if Gibbs such a knockout artist, which I don't know if anyone's ever said Gibbs a knockout artist, he has knockout power, but maybe that's just another little slight jab across the bow. Listen, Mr. Strength and Conditioning Coach, if your guy can knock people out left and right, what's the need for eight rounds in general? I'm just saying, I'm thirsty for this matchup, and boy, they're already quenching it. But essentially, again, it is going to be these little jabs back and forth between the two, because listen, I love both guys. I love Leon. I think he's one of the most real people in our scene, but Ailey's cut from the same cloth. He's just as real. They're both great coaches, but I'm going to tell you something that you probably already know. This thing, whether they want it to be or not, is personal. Maybe not for them, but for the two fighters in the ring, for Kenny and Gibb, two guys that come from the same community, Maybe they're not the closest of friends, but they know each other well. Their friends are friends with others. The same reason people said, I don't know about the KSI and Gibb thing is going to come into play here. So it is going to get interesting to see how emotions and or personal this gets as we go forward. I can't fight for Gibb. Mm. Daily can't, can't fight for Kenny. Right. So we both have to prepare our soldiers for battle in it mm -hmm. and make sure they implement what they've learned and the game plan, adjust, problem solve. So that's it, isn't it? It's what it is. But fight, I'm looking forward though. to it. Yeah, I'm looking fight, forward to it. Man. I want to see a great fight. Yeah, same. It's I want to see a great fight. It's going to be a great fight. It's it's be I want to see fight. a great fight. I don't want to speak for Leon, and he doesn't say it there, but from his perspective, they obviously think Gibb has the tools to get inside Kenny's reach. And despite what happened with Winterson, I'm sure they, in their minds, think Gibb is the better inside fighter as far as throwing combinations upstairs and down, the variety of moving in and out, and being able to work with high volume behind that, I think is where they see the difference and i'm sure there's other places as well obviously the cardio is one where gibb is just constantly on the gas pedal and not in a way that winterson was where he was yes in the fight and he was moving forward constantly but it was almost just a moving target i don't know if that is necessarily as indicative of what gibb is now maybe gibb from jake paul and maybe even the gibb from taylor holder you could say was a little bit of that but i think he's evolved a little bit past that now so i'm sure that's where gibb's team thinks and and is going to plan to be successful against kenny because at range, he is deadly with that jab. We saw it against Winterson. We've seen it against everyone. And the only real weak spots you can see is when you navigate around it. And yes, if you're able to have success on the inside, but as far as what Kenny's going to do to Gibb, I'm going to let Daly speak for himself, and then we'll come back and break this down. All I can say is I'm excited for this one just because of the way Gibb fights. That's all I can say. I'm more excited about this one than I am the Winterson fight because of Gibb's style. 
Um, and um, I expect and I demand from my brother, man, which is going to be hard to top, but a better performance um, that he had against Winderson. It's interesting the way he just said that, that he expects and demands a better performance against Gibb than against Winderson Nunes because of the way that Gibb fights. And just putting two and two together there, one, yes, of course, Daly should demand excellence out of Kenny. Like, that is what's gotten Kenny as good as he's gotten in this short amount of time. Let's just, for a second, think about this. Kenny has gotten so good. Again, granted, maybe Winderson wasn't the best matchup for Kenny and he didn't maybe perform the best on the night, whatever you want to say. But from the time Kenny started this journey, he looked like he was hitting a fat Joe Lean back, throw the hook. Lean back, throw the... It, it didn't look good. But he's gotten so damn good in the, what is it, year and a half that he's done this from just the change from the temper fight to the face sensei fight. That wasn't the same guy remotely. His jab had developed so much for, again, a guy of his size with that reach. Boxing acumen defensively was the next thing to come about. Like he was defensively sound way quicker than most people are. And now he's added his offense and his confidence in that offense to his game. But there's still things that we have not seen from Kenny. How he can develop his inside game, which is starting to come along. And also how he can develop power. There's not been a Kenny that really sits down on shots. I think the one shot I've seen him really sit down on isn't even the knockdown of Winderson. The left hook that he knocked Winderson down with, he didn't even really sit down on like that. It was just, he caught him perfectly with the hook coming up and raising his level in the exchange. Again, inside and dropped Winderson with it, but it was the right hand he hit Nate with. He really sat down on that shot and it was a massive shot. But there's other things that Kenny is developing quickly, so... Putting two and two together, when Daly says he demands a better performance while also saying Gibbs' style is perfect for Kenny while also saying Winderson's style was perfect for Kenny, I have to think that he sees some similarities in Gibbs' game comparatively to Winderson. And if that's the case, I would agree with him in some respects. Like, yeah, Winderson walks forward and Gibb walks forward, but Gibb has more variety by far, in my opinion, than Winderson does. And I'm not saying that Daly doesn't think that. I'm just gathering and trying to, to, to piece together all the words he's saying. And again, Kenny with his reach and being able to fight off his back foot, where Daly has already said he doesn't think Gibb is one of the better fighters off his back foot, does lead me to believe he wants to draw Gibb into Kenny's range and then use some of Kenny's skills, again, with his jab, with his frame, to keep Gibb right just out of range where Gibb can't land, but just in range where Kenny can. In the rematch against Austin, yeah, I see the small details. He got rocked in that fight as well, even though he went on to win. I love Daly, man. He had to preface him saying that he saw Gibb get rocked with. I see the small details. He's right. Gibb got hit with a big shot, a big lead right hook. I don't know how off his equilibrium was because he did trip in that shot or how much he was actually rocked in that. But he got hit with a big shot. Not was flying out of the nose like a bull had just been uncaged and saw Fred Tox fighting, standing there in a fucking red sweater, ready to run him down. Like people underestimate Kenny because um, power, because obviously he's boxing... Uh, with the sweet science, you know what I mean? With with the right fundamentals, so they forget about the power. But if you look, he knocked out DK Money, Cold, uh, knocked out My Name Nate, and Winderson has a good chin, a good chin. He done an exhibition with uh, a former multiple world champion, right? True. And, and, you know, went all the way with him taking a beating. And he didn't go down, you know what I mean? Um, but my brother dropped Winderson, you know, with a left hook. So my brother has underrated power. Here's the thing. Daly's right, and he's also... he. I, I don't know if he's wrong when he says part of this, but he's right, and there's part of it up for debate. So when he says Kenny has power, I agree with him. Like, it's there. When he sits down on shots, he can land massive power. But he's only sat down on shots, like we talked about earlier in the video, a very small number of times. Like... DK Money sat down on the right hand, clipped him with the first right hand, sat down with the straight right, put him down. My mate Nate sat down with the overhand right, put him down. And maybe it is just a perception thing where people are like, oh, Kenny doesn't have power because he's throwing it all the time. I think it's more Kenny hasn't needed to show a ton of power in his fights because of one, yes, what Daly's saying, the way he fights, the sweet science, but also, but also because of his natural frame, he doesn't have to rely on getting inside and really punctuating people with his jab and then moving forward, sticking a foot in the ground and really turning one over. He can just touch you up from the outside, even with his hooks, his right hands, he can touch you up, which is kind of what he did to Winderson. He touched him up for five rounds. I don't think Kenny 
sat down on one big shot, maybe an uppercut or two here or there. But I didn't see him really sit down, twist his hips over, and throw a ton of power behind shots because he didn't have to. And he still dominated that fight. That's what, if you're watching this Gibb and Kenny fight and you're looking for reasons to kind of watch Kenny, that's what you should watch. If he decides to sit down on punches and he's able to be accurate and tight in close quarters or just at range, he wants to fire that jab. We know is nasty bang and then throw a right hand, but not just a touch right hand, like really trying to put it through Gibbs fucking nose. That is where we could see that next evolution of Kenny. That's where the danger zone is because at that range where Gibb can't hit him back, and he really starts putting power behind stuff. And he could be very dangerous, not just for Gibb, for anybody at that weight class. But as we leave off, I, I want to offer you guys the question, what does this fight look like to you? Because the main points I take away from both coaches are really nothing on Leon's end so far. He's, he's kind of keeping things close to the vest. I mean, I know just from hearing him talk about how Kenny fights and what he can improve on. He was talking about Kenny's confidence and the fact that he needs this makes him a better boxer. Like he thinks that Kenny needs this more than Winterson did. But if I'm correct about the four corners debate, I'll have to go back and watch. He was saying he thinks Kenny gets lost in the ring sometimes, like doesn't know his purpose in there. And I don't necessarily agree with him after the Winterson fight, but maybe if a guy like Gibb could walk forward and put that volume on him, Kenny would lose himself and not in the way Eminem did on 8 Mile, in the way that leads him out to the deep end once again with no life preserver, no floaties, and no way back in while Gibb is doing the Queen's Wave on the SS Big Nose headed back to shore. But on the other side of things, Daly is pretty much giving up the gab here and saying, listen, I've already seen enough from Gibb. I know exactly what this guy brings. I know that Kenny can beat him. In fact, I know so well that Kenny can beat him that I expect and demand a better performance than the domination of five rounds Kenny just put on Winderson Nunez. Now, who's actually right? Well, I don't have those answers. But once we get a date for the Kingpin Finals, this matchup will solidify a king in the ring and on the outside coaching area. Whether you want to believe it or not, the winner of this tournament will not just display who the best fighters are, but who the best coaches are. Who's it going to be? Guess we'll find out.